Hi, it's episode 33, season 3 of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. My name's Jav. Joining me this week, John Staples from Merchester. Buenos assistente. And back again on the pod, um, host of the first time, long time podcast, Aaron Wolf from Boston. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Um, right, let's. Um, we should begin with Tottenham, but because um, it's a Tottenham podcast and all that. Um, but it's gone, just gone six o'clock on Sunday, the sixteenth of April, Easter Sunday. Um, United, Man United, have just beaten Chelsea, um, and. We are only now four points, having beaten Watford yesterday. We are only now four points behind, behind, um, behind Chelsea. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the the, the, the title race um, in a minute and and the implications of, of that result. Let's begin with yesterday, though. Yesterday's match, um, John. If I come to you first, um, convincing win. It's getting boring now, isn't it? Every week, Spurs turning up, winning four nil. Yeah, uh, we played Bournemouth, not Watford. But, uh, you said what? But I said. Indeed, you said you said what? Do you want <laughs> okay. to start again? Uh, no, let's let's continue. <laughs> let's just continue. <laughs> are, are you are you are you giddy and high on the fact that we're only four points behind, Jav? I am. Yeah, I'm just I'm just getting carried away. But it's, it's, it's all these results emerging into one, you know. The shit team, average team, mediocre t- team turns up at White Hart Lane. We beat them 4 0. Following week, we beat them, beat another average team 4 0. Actually, I tell you what. Yesterday in the warm up um, at the lane. Um, Bournemouth were wearing yellow T-shirts, so it looked as though it was Watford. So maybe that that had something to do with it. Bournemouth, um, they're as shit as Watford. Yeah, um, it's, I, I yearn for the days where we would struggle. To be honest with you, because it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's about as one one side as you could get. Um, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to call for us to uh, to quit the Premier League. And go around the world like the Harlem Globetrotters selling our brand of football <laughs> to the masses because that's what we looked like yesterday. We were serious. So, we were. They had one shot on goal in the seventy fourth minute. Um, you know, I was trying to think what did what could Hugo do within those seventy four minutes that he, he had fuck all to do yesterday. Um, I believe he could fly from Detroit to Boston. Um, that's about seventy four minutes. Um, he could have spent the game signing autographs. To be honest with you, because he had so little to do. Um, we we were better coached, we had better fitness, and we all always looked like we could step out of first gear because we never left first gear. It was just far too easy. It was far too comfortable and far too easy. Yeah, I, I, I yearn for us to struggle a little. I'm only joking. I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> well, Hugo could have cracked open a bo- bottle of wine, um, got a baguette out, maybe some nice French cheese, just, you know, had a, had he, a, little, he had a little picnic. He could have made the baguettes, for fuck's yeah, sake. Yeah. <laughs> It was like watching. It was like when when you were like you're playing FIFA and you don't realize that you've like accidentally set it to amateur, and you're just like (laughs) crushing the other team. And this is just too easy. And then suddenly you realize, oh right, 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 right. But like it never happened, right? They never. They just didn't show up. They 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 sort of idled near the ball and never actually pressed. Never actually tried to attack. It was it was really pitiful from 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 Bournemouth. Are we are we seriously that good that we can just turn over teams at will like that? Because they, they, like you say, they there wasn't they had nothing. That for seventy four minutes they had nothing, and it was you know we might we are like, frighteningly good, frighteningly good. Yeah, I think Thornil yeah. Thornil was very kind on them because given the amount of chances that that were missed in that match, um, it could have been you know it could have been a cricket score, frankly. And you said right. we never really got out of first gear, but I have to say, I mean, there was some there were some spells of possession that were absolutely beautiful. It wasn't, you know, just kind of wandering about and then dunking a couple in, you know. I mean, uh, the, the comes to mind um, the couple of incisive passes from from Vertonghen that just 
absolutely had my blood um, pumping. You know, I, he's just he. We're we are we're that. I think we're we're that good. I think we're that good. Um, I think they were really really poor, but I think we are just. We've hit um, we've hit form and absolutely the perfect moment of the season to hit form. Yeah, I think. I sorry, John. No, go ahead. Um, I think that yeah, for for large parts of the game, we we played certainly we we, we, we as poor as they were, we 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 bossed them. We, we um, Dembele in particular, I think was um, I think it was man of the match, but. Um, he he had certainly one of his best games this season. I, I thought in his Spurs shirt, it was good to see him. Um, his fitness levels returning. Um, Ericsson was superb, um, but I think there were there were periods of of, of the time where of, of, of the match whereby we didn't maybe press them enough. We were just a bit. We sat back. We were just ah, it's Bournemouth, you know. It was that sort of thing, and. And frankly, I mean, you can see Pochettino on the sidelines getting very animated um, and, and, and not happy with that. But you know, they they didn't really offer any any threats going forward. We 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 never looked like we we weren't in control of the game. Uh, you know, we I don't think we ever troubled. We really weren't. We looked like we had all the time in the world on the board. They pressed us that little. Yeah. Um, and it's dangerous if if any team gives us that amount of time, we will you know we will beat them. And it it should have been a cricket score. And I think four nil, three nil would have definitely flattered them. But four nil was a little bit more respectable on our our half. I think Jan was superb yesterday. I'll agree with that. And Dembélé as well. It's it's good to see them both in in such great form. Sixty nine percent of possession, fourteen shots on target. 24 shots total, 89% pass success percentage. I mean, uh, it was just, it was like it was a training match in, in, in many ways. And um, that's the thing. If if, if you're, the team aren't presenting anything for you to play against, you will yeah. take your foot off the gas and you will just, oh, we'll just, you know, we'll just keep the ball, make the run about a bit more. Oh, look, we're in the box again. Oh, look, another goal. And that's that's how you do it. You You, you draw teams into you. So I'm, I'm, I don't mind that they, they took their foot off the gas because it's saving energy. Big, bigger teams to play and bigger te- fish to fry. That said, I will, I will say that I love watching Poch get animated. And I love, I, love, I love the way he celebrated every goal and he's pushing them forward and, and he's relentless. I mean, obviously he's relentless in everything that he does, but even in a 4-0 win at home, he's just relentless. And I think we need it. I think it's carrying us right now. Um, Along with many other things, but I think it's it's absolutely part of our character. His push, his drive, and his um, his passion. It's amazing to watch. The significant significance of, of of the match. Um, well, if if we're going to mount a challenge, uh, a, a title challenge, you can sit there and go through all the fixtures and, and and say, well, possibly Chelsea will drop points here, and you know if we win all of these, but really. Mauricio summed it up before the match in his press conference, where he, he was effectively just saying, you know, the old football adage of take one game at, at a time, and he, and he said that, you know, we can't look beyond beyond the next game, and the focus has to be on winning the match and getting the three three points. The thing is, we didn't just do that; we won convincingly again for the second week in a row. You know, it would have been one thing if we, you know, narrowly won that two nil, put in a dogged performance, got the three points, done, got a professional job. We 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 won convincingly that says something about the character of the side um at the moment and what is it now seven seven league win, win, wins um on the trot i i the beginning of april or the end of march i i looked at the games that we had two away burnley swansea then <sighs> watford and um Bournemouth and I didn't I honestly didn't think we'd get full points from all of those games I thought well, okay the home matches we should do on paper the away ones, to be honest, I would have been happy with four points from from those two away matches to win them both, and the next two, right, and just keep on going and grinding and, and getting results and playing great is just um, speaks volumes, really, of our side. Um, Kane got on the score sheet, which was good. Um, that's what twenty. He's got twenty goals now, three consecutive seasons. Yep. Unbelievable. Amazing. World uh, class. 
the other person obviously got the score sheet, Janssen. Um, thoughts on him, briefly? Is he... Played well, deserved the goal, and first of many. Yeah. I loved, I, I loved, you know, you could see where his place is in the team, just by the team celebration and, and, and Pacha's celebration, and uh, I feel like all of us breathe a sigh of relief. We've now it's now twice that we've we've breathed a sigh of relief. We scored from open play twice now for us. And um this one when he did it go off the bar or did it come off the keeper first? But the the first deflection he thought, oh no, he's just never he's just never gonna happen. But then the second time on on you know on the second attempt, um it it was great to see. It was just great and I think he deserved it and I was Fully prepared to, to come on the pod and say, you know, it's not fair. He gets five minutes at the end of the game. How is he possibly going to ever score for us? But there it is. He did it. And um, many more to come. When I watched it in real time, um, and I was, I was in the West Lower yesterday, so I wasn't too far off. I had a good view of his goal. But when I watched it in real time, I thought it looked a bit scrappy. And I thought, first thing was first reaction was when he took the first shot. I thought, oh, God, here we go again. And then, and then he... He eventually got the ball in the net, but it just looked scrappy to me. Having watched it again on TV, I actually think he's, it's a decent effort. It's, it's pretty good. The fact that he's just so dogged and, and determined to to, um, to to get the ball off the rebound and, and turn it in, I just I thought that because I think it was he had a crack with his left foot and then and then the keeper, the keeper saved it and then he went on his right, which is his weaker foot, um, and he and he just buried it in the in the net. Um, yeah. And maybe, possibly, a few few weeks ago, a few months ago, he might have missed that. Um, but that was good to see. Obviously, Musa got, got a goal. Um, the other one is Son. He had, a, he had a great crack, Musa. By the way, yeah. I mean, it looked like a, just a low, you know, drive along the ground. But it was what a. I mean, he's got quite a strike on him. Yeah, it's a it shame was a that he shot. It's a shame he doesn't 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 take shots more, more often. He certainly has a fair shot. Um, yeah. Anderlecht comes to mind. Is it Anderlecht? Yeah. He scored. I was there yeah. with you, Aaron. Yep. Yeah. Um, Son got got on the score shit again, and there was a, there was a stat I think last week, but just to follow on from that. Um, so Son's now been involved in. Um, he's had a hand in five of our last three Premier League goals. Four four goals he scored and one assist. Um, we had a couple of questions around Son. Um, and and uh, the first the first one's from Sam Sam Moore who says is Son an underappreciated asset in our team? Aaron, I I think at this point no because I think we all have come to appreciate him. Um, I think he's he's certainly um, in an incredible he's found an incredible vein of form and um, I think it was last time I was on the pod I said I wanted to see him start alongside Kane and because of the injuries and and a reversion to Four two three one. Mm. Now we're seeing it, mm. um, and yeah, I think. I mean, I think he's shown that he's capable of ma- being an impact sub off the bench. He's shown that he's capable of of leading the line when it when he needs to, and um, and here he's shown that he's capable of being an attacking uh, midfielder. Com- you know, coming in off the wing, he's he's uh, exactly what what Poch wants out of a player from what we've, what I've read and what we've, what we've heard, right. That he's, he's versatile. He can play many positions, um, at least in the attacking third. And, um, I, I don't, if there's anybody that doesn't appreciate him now, I, I don't know what, what you're seeing essentially. That's my opinion about him. I, I would very much agree. He's so improved and he's such an important player for us. Now he's such a great finisher as well. Give him a, you know, a, when he was running in yesterday, he, yeah, he muscled the guy out, uh, out of the way and, and that his shot, it, he's he's great on the ball. Um, I'm so happy for him because, you know, he he could have left in the summer and there was rumours he was going to go back to Ger- Germany, but I'm so glad that he's he's doing what he's doing. There are... Yeah, every, sorry, everyone's yeah. talking about Defoe having, you know, yet another season where he's sliding home constantly. Defoe's got 14 goals. Son's got 12 in the league. I mean, you know, that's those are great numbers. Those are great numbers for for a player that doesn't get a lot of starts. Mm. Interesting, John, that you should mention um, the summer um, and Son 
um, speaking to Maurizio and, and saying, you know, he went to him and said, you know, Gaffer, have, have I got a place in, in, in the team? And it reminds me of a few years ago with Musa um, in Pochettino, Pochettino's first season, and he was linked with possibly a move away from Spurs, and and I think a similar sort of conversation, as I recall, happened. Yeah. And he then was a revelation last season, and and so he's continued that this season um, with Son for me always there was a talented player there but you would you would get two extremes you'd either get he would be superb or um, it, it blow over cold but nothing in between now he's just on he's just playing really well but doing it consistently for me and he's, and he's, he's a player with, with, with confidence playing with with, with confidence um, and you've got to give credit to uh, Maurizio for, for, for getting the best out of him Um Another he also, I, he also. I just want to add that uh, one massive knock on him has been his tracking back and, and his defensive duties. And granted, he didn't have to do much yesterday, mm-hmm. but there were a couple of times where he was showing up, um, um, providing cover for Dav- Davis, and and um, you know that's that's also got to be down to the coach. Absolutely, and and that's not an easy thing for a player if if it's not if you don't have that propensity to track back, mm-hmm. it can be difficult to be asked to do that it's going to take time um you know eventually if you show the right attitude and you're willing to do that eventually it'll it'll come to you um and and, and we're starting to see that um another question on sun um kareem apologies if i pronounced this wrong kareem cron flee says sun now appears to be working more with the rest of the team more provider and forward engine than just head down and run discuss uh, him and Ericsson yesterday were playing as literally as two number tens behind Kane, which was uh, possibly because Bournemouth were so poor and it was allowing them to play that. But if you've got Son and Ericsson behind Kane and you've got Ali as well in that three behind him, we're always going to get goals. And it, it just gives you a different option for the player and a different style. I mean, Ali's... There was, you know, an outcry when he wasn't nominated for PFA. But Son as well is coming to form and he should possibly be nominated as well. He's a great player. He really is. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think he's, he's, he's developing really, really, really well. And um, I hope he has nowhere to go in the summer because I hope that he just continues the progress. Um, if either of you had to pick a man of the match from yesterday who would it be Aaron if I come to you first uh yeah I think it would I think it would be Dembele I think um I think his presence his his strength his goal but also just watching you know even the lead up to the goal watching him interchange with Ericsson it's kind of interesting to see how these like partnerships are are have emerged in the team and one that's unexpected to me is is Ericsson and and Dembele were kind of swapping back and forth at various points in the first kind of 15 minutes of the game and watching his presence of mind and dictating dictating the play from deep and then coming forward and you know it, it just he was he he typifies and exemplifies the team most of the time and and yesterday he certainly seemed to to be doing that so he's he's my man of the match uh, i'm going to go with yan because every time they went forward yan was mopping it up he was mm. he was fantastic yesterday some of those passes and balls he was playing he he's picked up the last couple of weeks months he has been exceptional and he's been up there with um toby as as one of the as our, our better defender i think um so i'm going to give it to jan yeah i'm going to go for 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 musa although i thought Ericsson had a very good game as well and um, there was there was an interception that jan made around about the 40th minute um i think it was near the halfway line um, and it was a sort of last, um, uh, uh, like the, it was effectively the, the last line of defence. Then he lunged in and, and made a superb tackle or intercept, inter- interception. It was it was Toby esque. Um, uh, that that was impressive. But yeah, for me, I'd, I'd go for Musa. Um, let's m- move on to how this, how yesterday's result and today's results, um, United beating Chelsea will affect things in the title race. So now we're four points behind Chelsea with six matches left. Um, we don't play until um, a week Wednesday when we play Crystal Palace away. We've got far, fairly superior, vastly superior 
um, goal difference. We're on 46, um, they're on 38. It's interesting, so it, if, if, if should we ever get level on points, that could be um, crucial. Um, can we do it, John? Yes, we can. Will we? I'm not so sure. Uh, I, I still don't think Chelsea will drop the required points by the end of the season. Looking at their games, um, they then their next three are the key ones, and then they play Middlesbrough, Sunderland, and West Brom. Yeah. Um, so if it doesn't happen in the next couple, if uh, I, I thought it was, it may have been gone when they didn't beat Man when Man, Man City didn't beat them or get anything out of it. Um, can we do it? Yes, we can. Will we do it? Not so sure. They have they have Southampton, Everton, and who? I'm clicking around looking for it, but I, I don't seem to see it. Um, well, ne- next weekend's key because we have them in the FA Cup. If right. we if we trounce them in the FA Cup next week or beat them, I see that's a yeah. massive yeah. psychological blow. And you know everybody's building that one up, and it's going to be a massive game. Uh, you know uh, they they didn't turn up against Man United today. I was I had it on the radio and following on Twitter and bits and you know they did apparently they didn't turn up and Man United did a job on them so I'm sure they're going to want a reaction next weekend yeah. so we have to be careful a little I feel but you know yeah the next three games I think is 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 going to be key well right, before, before I come to you, Aaron just just on today's match it's interesting I was watching that so Courtois was injured Alonso was injured it's interesting how suddenly a few injuries affect their team. Um, they've been so lucky with injuries all season. Um, we've had numerous injuries, as everyone knows. Yet, as soon as one player gets injured, I keep hearing people say, "Oh, we don't have the don't, Spurs don't have the strength and depth." Rubbish. If you take out Acosta, you take out Hazard, or like today Alonso, for example, from from the Chelsea team, it's going to affect them. Um, they looked brittle. They looked. Uh, they just didn't turn up against United, but mentally they they, they did, there was some, something there's something in that just didn't look right about them. Um, and and if we can beat them in the FA Cup next week, that's going to be a further knock um, for them. Um, Aaron, can we do it? I'm just looking at. I mean, you know, there's two questions, right? Who they're, who they're going to drop points to, and if can we go? The rest of of the of the season without dropping points, and I want to say that we can go the rest of the season um, and not drop points. But that's that's a tall that's a tall order. Um, West Ham, United, Woolwich, they could all, you know, it's possible that we could we could drop points in in those games. Um, it, Sorry, that, that that that's the thing. It, we're, we're assuming that that we win all of our six matches, and even and, right. and if we if we do that, we've got to hope that they drop on two occasions, drop some points. Uh, two and you dro- look at at Palace, for example. Even I didn't even list them, but Palace has been, you know, uh, getting some very 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 good wins um, and unexpected wins. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we have to. It's a it's a really it's it's a really tough position to be in that being said um it's not a bad position right like we're we're chasing them we just have to keep executing we don't have to be looking over our shoulder we just have to show up um and and do our job um and they have you know what could be a potentially tricky situation Everton could be pushing for for you know uh fifth place there, there's some they they're facing a couple of teams that are in the relegation fight maybe Chelsea faces a couple of teams that are playing above their weight um battling above their weight it's you know I really I wouldn't bet on it right now but I wouldn't bet against it either I'm just really really looking forward to the next few weeks yeah I think we, we've got a Real contest here, but the good thing is I don't f- I don't feel the pressure as a fan. Um, I'm much more relaxed about it now than than I was 12 months ago when when we were chasing Leicester, and I yeah. fe- I felt then even though we were exactly in pretty much the same position, I, I felt a lot more pressure then, um, and I don't this season. Um, I, I wonder if that's if that's also a function of the fact that last season we weren't sure if we were meant to be there. You know, yeah, like. 
it yeah. wasn't clear if if we deserve second place, if we deserve to be part of it. I mean, we were all giggling about being in 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 the in the contest, basically, and saying, "Yeah, but when the big guys come back, when those teams sort themselves out, we won't be part of the conversation." The other teams have sorted themselves out. We're still part of the conversation. We're the only other team that's part of the conversation. So uh, it does, it feels like less pressure. It feels a little bit like, okay, great. Let's see if we can get closer. Let's see if we can get closer. And um, this isn't going to be a, a, a one-time deal. Next season, we're going to challenge again. And that's really exciting. Last season was uncharted waters for us. This season, after last season, I thought we'd be in the mix, and we are. So I think that that that's a that's a big thing. And and plus, as you know, with with with, with Leicester, because it was Leicester City, there was an expectation that oh, we can catch them. With Chelsea, everybody thought well, it's Chelsea. So I think that helps. By the way, their fixtures. So it's it's the next two after the FA Cup match. So it's Southampton at home and Everton away. And then the last four on paper are quite easy. So it's Middlesbrough home, West Brom away, Watford home, Sunderland home. Right. Um, I think that... I don't think we'll... If you've asked me now, if you're going to put me on the spot, I would say I don't think we're going to catch them. Um, however, um, it, it's certainly got a lot more interesting. Um, and I think that... I think it's going to be... Uh, it's one thing asking them to drop points on two occasions which is which is possible Everton away won't be easy and and you never know one of these other games on, on paper looks simple like Middlesbrough at home or, or or Watford at home for example that they might slip up and, and, and draw but that also assumes we, we, we win all our games and and I looking at our fixtures I think Palace away will be tricky um, you can just see it now Spurs having you know only having cut their lead to four points going into that next match and undoing the, the, the good work um, and dropping points. The other one that really concerns me is United at home, the final game at, at White Hart Lane, because Mourinho's team, they've only lost three times this season in the league, the same as us. They've drawn an awful lot, but they've, they're have they a very resilient team and, and difficult to beat, and I think Mourinho will come to White Hart Lane with a, with a game plan. So I think that will make it dif- difficult. So on that basis, I can't see us winning the league, but let's just enjoy the ride. Let's just let's just go and try to win the next match, and and then just take it one one game at a time. If if, if we I'll, win win all our games, then we'll let's see where where we are at the end of the season. I'll tell you I'm another thing. I'm shitting myself. That's... Can I just say I'm <laughs> shitting myself over this running? I really am. The people, I'm not nervous. No, I am shitting myself. There's, there's a long way to go. I mean, our next four games are four London derbies. Mm. Bring it Chelsea, on. Chelsea, Palace, on. Arsenal, West Ham. I'm, yeah, I, amazing. I, it, it, they're all the, all of those games across the season. Any time are big games. I'm, I'm shit. I'm, you know, I'm. I, I said to my wife earlier, I might get a bit mad between now and the end of the season because I don't know. We uh, well, after last season when it all went hits up it, I'm, 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 my expectations are a little higher because we're a better team and we've, we're, there's more about us and, and like you say we are part of that conversation and the big boys have come back and we're still there and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah I'll, th- my, I'll tell you another thing though we are last season we were battling the world the world was against us yeah. every single person on the planet that cares at all about football was, was saying I hope Leicester wins, right? And there's first of all, I'm not. I wouldn't say that we are. We've got the world behind us in the way that Leicester City had, but I think teams are going to show up against Chelsea in a way that they did not show up against Leicester. Um, I think people are paying attention in a different way, and I think um, I think the neutrals are going to be uh, more interested in us winning than Chelsea, and um, and that 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 matters, you know. Okay, um, let's talk about um, let's talk. We're talking about Chelsea. Let, let's talk about next weekend and the FA Cup. In fact, before I do one one highlight highlight of yesterday um, was um, dear old Jack Wilshire. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so he, you know, as as you can imagine, you know, got lots of abuse and, and pelters from our from our fans, justifiably so, over the course of the game, um, and then. He went down injured, which was um, which was quite amusing, really, um, <laughs> because it was just we started singing, um, "It's happening again, Jack Wilshire, it's happening again," 
And then he got up, he tried to play, and then he collapsed again. And it was just hilarious. Um, I don't think I've seen anything like it. Uh, by the way, um, on John, you would have seen this, but on, on, on British TV, on, on Match of the Day, one of the commentators um, said it was unseemly Spurs fans to behave in that way. Oh, I don't think, for the record, okay, we all know what, we all know what Jack Wilshire is, as, you know, from his, as, as a person, and and what he's done in the past, and the way he's behaved, and 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 and, and all of that. He's also plays. He's he's a he's well, he's still an Arsenal player, isn't he? He's been loaned out to Bournemouth, so you've got to understand the rivalry. If, if nobody gets that, um, the other thing is, I don't think we were we were wishing him to be injured, right? Um, I couldn't care less whether he. In some ways, I would rather he played the full 90 and just just got um, 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 embarrassed and was complicit in the whole thing but it's the fact that he got injured it was just funny it was just amusing um end off really there was condemnation across twitter for for the the jeering and stuff but you know the people with short memories won't remember the the bus top songs that he got the crowd to sing about tottenham etc and as a as a as an Arsenal fan himself, he gets the rivalry, mm. so he won't. You know, he knows if he dishes it out, he has to expect it back from yep. Tottenham fans. So, at the end of the day, he's got chocolate ankles. Fuck him, and fuck the media that don't get that rivalry as well. Yeah, and I, think- I agree, and I don't know. I even wonder if he was injured. To be honest, yeah. like I think you know, it was that was that is that is absolute humiliation, abject humiliation for him. Um, first of all, to be playing. To be playing for them, not playing for Arsenal, to be on loan, and then to just be absolutely humiliated by Tottenham. Um, it, it, to me, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he was injured. I, I, haven't, I'm look, I haven't seen anything in the news about what had happened, really. But it just seemed like he wanted to be done with the game. And um, yeah, Dembele like schooled him. him. Dembele schooled him yesterday. Absolutely. That, that's how a midfielder should perform. But from, from what I saw of the incident, he looked to go in on Kane. And he looked like he was going on and came quite hard in the penalty box. And then he he went over on his ankle and that was it. So even more so, he tried to injure one of ours. Fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. I, I hate him, but I think that actually you, you touched upon this earlier about the fact that, you know, he, he's an Arsenal fan and, and he understands that, 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 that you dish out and you, you're going to get it back. I don't think, I, I think if you actually asked um, Jack Wilshire, I don't think he'd have a problem with Spurs fans um, giving him abuse. Uh, he gets no, it. I don't. He actually no, gets I, it. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. I'm, 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 I'm defending him, but 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 what really annoys me are the people, are the media, and the pundits who who don't seem to understand that. Um, yet, where was you know? I was at the Millwall game, um, and Son was getting abuse, racist abuse from Millwall fans. I, d- I didn't. I don't recall any co- condemnation from anybody in the media at the time. I don't recall any condemnation from the media when West Ham and Chelsea fans, or some number of West Ham and Chelsea fans, not all of them, were chanting anti-Semitic songs. Um, that just goes seems to go unnoticed. Yet it happens. Ah. It seems like. They can't handle the fact that we are so good and they just want to bring us down that little notch yeah. by, you know, saying, oh, well, they said nasty things about a player who, who should be absolutely amazing and, and smashing it, but isn't. So, OK, let's, let's just let's briefly talk about next week. Um, FA Cup tie, Chelsea. Um, we've, we had a couple of questions um, around that. Um, Ed Brad asks, um, who should play in goal, Vorm or Lloris? which Vaughan was featured in, in, in the earlier rounds. Um, and then he says, any other first-choice players that may be rotated? James Parr also, a question from him, should you even be, well, uh, sorry, he says, should you even be rotating in the semi-final? For me, it's the same team as started this week. Um, and uh, apart from Danny Rose and Ben Davis, that's as strong a side as we can put out. I like Dembele and Dyer in mm. midfield. Um, we had yesterday. We had a bit of that swagger that we had from last season when with the, those two in the midfield. Um, I don't want Banyama has come in and disrupted that a little bit. And you know, don't get me wrong, he's a great player, but Dembele and Dyer in midfield, we have that swagger and they play well together. So I would go out with the same team that started yesterday. And Walker to snap Hazard's ankles early doors, please. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much agree. Um, I, you know. The I think you can't I think you can't rotate 
first of all, I don't think, you, I don't think we should rotate, but also, you know, oh, that was a loud slam. Sorry about that. The um, Vorm, Vorm would have to have known that if we get this deep in the competition, Loris is going to come in. Um, and, you know, the, the sentimentality should, goes out the window at this point. It's got to be Loris. Um, and the question is, you play three at the back or, 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 or uh, four at the back. And, um, yeah, right now it certainly seems like um, you would want to play uh, the same team as this week. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we reverted to three at the, the back and have Sun come in off the bench. But either one of those two choices are absolutely fine by me. Yeah, I was... I was discussing this um I was at the game yesterday with with Kent Goodrich um friend of the show and his wife Robin um and we we were discussing this do we go with a back three and if we do um who do you drop and the only one that came to mind was Sun but then how do you drop Sun um the way he's been playing recently um and obviously if you go with back three when Yama comes in and 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 he gives you further protection well he gives you well he's Wanyama he, he he's a beast he, he gives you that 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 bite in midfield, which obviously Dyer does as well. But um, okay, for me, I would yeah. It, there's a precedent for this. Um, you go back to the Capital One Cup or, the, or whatever it's called now, the EFL, a few years ago. In the latter rounds, um, Lloris came in for, for, for Vaughan, and against in the semi-final and against Chelsea, Lloris has, has got a start. In fact, Vaughan's um, Vaughan's still carrying a knock, so yeah, it'll be it'll be Lloris. Um, Trippier could could play but I think it'll be Walker I'd expect Trippier to play against Crystal Palace I think I think the fullbacks yeah. might get, get get rotated a bit um, as we've got a few midweek matches um, in April and May um, and I've got a sneaking suspicion that Danny Rose might start only just because of something uh, well in the press conference earlier this this week on, on Friday in fact um, Mauricio said that Rose would start outdoor training next week. Now that would imply he's a long way off, and certainly from match fitness, he, he might not be ready. But he, there was something when he was asked about the Chelsea game. There was something to me in his answer that suggested we might see Rose come in. Um, but I could be talking absolute bollocks. But we shall see. Um, as for the formation, yeah, you could go for either or. Formation. I'm tempted to go with a back three, slot Dyer at the at the back, put Wanya Armour back in midfield, and um, have Son coming off the bench, which would which actually which would actually be a very good option to have off the bench, particularly with his pace as legs tire in the game. Um, predictions. I, we'll I win. You you think we'll win? No, I think we'll, we've got it in us. To dare is to do, yeah. Look, in the last three games we played Chelsea, we've led in each of them. We in uh, we drew one and we we lost the heads. And there's a weldy, and that was last season. This time, uh, you know, we were ahead. Silly mistake, another weldy, and the game turns in their favour. And uh, the lane this season, we controlled the game and they had not a sniff. We've got it in us to beat them. Poch knows how to play them. We keep our heads. We win. What's the scoreline? I'm going to go two one to us. Yeah, I think I, want, I think I, think I want to same. say think... four nil. I want to say four nil because <laughs> we're just rolling teams over four nil. But yeah, two one. I think we're going to win as well. I think it's going to be really unpleasant to watch. <laughs> I have a feeling. I think it's going to be three two, and I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a two two draw for um, about thirty five minutes at the end of the game, and then. Uh, Sun's gonna um, get us the winner, and uh, I agree. I think I think we've had the better of them every time, bar bar a couple of worldies. And um, you know, I think I think in some ways you look at at at, at what they have to play for, what we have to play for. The pl- I think we have a little bit more motivation to go out there and 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 get this cup. Um, I think they're going to have split focus in a way that um, I don't think that Poch allows our guys to have that. So, um, yeah, three to us. Jeff? Um, five on to us, and we're <laughs> going to crush them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Bex has got an update for Spurs ladies. 
Hello everyone, happy Easter. It's Bex to let you know what's been going on in the world of the ladies football team. They play today Cardiff against Cardiff City. Ladies at home at Chesson. That was a two o'clock kickoff. Cardiff scored in the sixth minute um, to make it 1-0. And um, despite the best efforts of Spurs ladies, we didn't equalise until the 84th minute. So what a really long haul to go behind. Um, but also great from the team for not giving up and folding. So that goal was scored by Nikki to win it. Um, who did what she does best. And then, <laughs> reminiscent of the Swansea game for the lads a couple of weeks back, Wendy Martin scored on 90 minutes plus six. So um, that maintains the girls' unbeaten run in the league, which is always very nice. So a nice little 2-1 for the girls means that their next game against West Ham on Wednesday night, which is a league game, it's under the floodlights at White Hart Lane. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Please go and watch the girls. Tickets are the princely sum of a fiver. Most of the kids are off school. Take your kids, go watch. The game next weekend is against Charlton and that's a league match. Again, that'll be really, really tight as we all, as I've mentioned a billion times before. Charlton are probably their closest rivals within the league at the moment. And that's borne out in the league table. Spurs are... Top of the league, played 15 with 43 points. Charlton a second, played 18 with 39 points. And we'll be seeing quite a lot of Charlton over the next couple of weeks. So like I said, they play next um, weekend. That's the 23rd. That's in Charlton at the New River Sport and Fitness place. Um, and that's at 2 o'clock. So then they play them again on Tuesday the 25th of April in the Capital Women's Cup final and that's at Wingate and Finchley FC and that's a half past seven kickoff. Um, and then after that we've got another game against them so they, we really are seeing quite a lot of them already beating them to win a silverware at once this season so hopefully we can do it again a couple of times and definitely take the league title too. So I have nothing more to say which is quite surprising in its own right. I am on Twitter at Bunches Bex. Or you can get in touch with me via the Facebook or Twitter page for the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Thanks very much. Speak to you next week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Thank you, Bex. Um, just to um, reiterate what, 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 what Bex has, uh, has said, um, Spurs ladies playing this Wednesday at White Hart Lane. Um, first time against West Ham ladies. If you can, get, get to White Hart Lane. I shall be there. I'll be in Block 12, West Lower. Um, it's only £5 at, um for a ticket, get behind the Spurs ladies. Um, and particularly for a lot of people, um, this might be, well, we've only got two matches left at White Hart Lane, Arsenal and, and, and United, and many people don't have tickets for those games. Um, so this might be your last chance to get to White Hart Lane to watch, watch a game of football. So if you can get, get down to, to Wednesday and support to get down to the lane on Wednesday and support the ladies, that would be fabulous. Um, what else? A few other announcements before we do questions. John, what's, been, what's, what's the exciting news of, of the week? Uh, apart from being four points behind Chelsea, uh, we have a yeah. new logo. I designed a new logo. Uh, I, I I had some inspiration and came up with something. So the podcast has a lovely shiny new logo. Excellent. And yep. it, it looks quite nice. I think it does. It does. Um, I just saw it for the first time. It looks fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, John. Um, that yeah, it's uh. Um, the less said about the previous logo, the better. Um, I take full responsibility for all that. Um, but anyway, um, I think when I when I started the, started the podcast, you, you had to have a bit of artwork, um, and, and I, it was you know it was mandatory, and 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 it wasn't the thing that I, I gave a great deal of thought to. So I just pinched the, an old Spurs badge, um, and it was a bit fuzzy as well, but it did, did the job. And I was always meaning to to change it but anyway john thank you um it, it, it's really good so um that's all been done um what else what else what else um we've got the youtube channel um tom Monster family podcast you can follow us on on there we've got all the pods on there if you want to send us questions you can do so via twitter the twitter handle is at thf podcast you can also contact us via the tom Monster family podcast facebook page um and you can email us spurs at the tom Monster family podcast.com um We've got a special podcast um, in a few weeks' time. Um, on Thursday, the 11th of May, I will be interviewing K 
Cat Laws and Martin Cloak from, from the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust once again. Um, that's become an annual thing that, that, that we do every May interviewing them. So if you've got questions for the Trust around, I don't know, um, ticket prices, um, governance issues, um, what they do, maybe, maybe you don't know what, what the Trust do, um, you're curious... Um, uh, around things like catering, um, I know I'll, I'll have some questions around <laughs> catering. Um, then, then, bagels, then, then, yeah, bagels, bagels. Um, uh, then, please get your questions over to me, um, and I should be interviewing them. So, there, there's a few few weeks yet until, until then, but have a think and, and send us send us your questions, um, and I can get them over to Cat and Martin. Um, the other thing just to mention is we, uh, last week we, we talked about um, Zach Gasnola um, and what he's doing for charity. So he's um, his father died uh, recently, um, sadly um, uh, had cancer, passed away, and he is um, raising money for um, St. Michael's Hospice. Um, their Twitter handle is at STM Hospice. Um, and if he reaches his target, which I believe is £500, um, then he will run around in an Arsenal shirt. Um, but though he does assure me he will wear a Spurs shirt underneath so the Arsenal shirt doesn't touch his flesh. So um, take a look at his Just Giving website. So it's www.justgiving.com slash fundraising slash get get shirty over cancer and if you can donate and um to a good cause and help a fellow spurs fan that would be perfect he's got about 200 pounds at the moment so um he's, he's not quite there yet but but hopefully we can get him over the line um, might i make a friendly suggestion mr gaznola i would invert the offer if you don't reach your your uh, fundraising goal, threaten to run around in an Arsenal shirt, and we'll all chip in to prevent that from happening to you. Hey, hey, that's a good good idea. Right, uh, let's finish off with some questions. Um, Joss Eddington, um, friend of the show. Um, it's by the way, it's Joss's birthday today, so happy birthday, Joss! Hey. Um, happy birthday, birthday, Joss! Twenty six again. Um, so. <laughs> Joss, I'm hoping to have him on the pod um, in a couple of weeks' time um, on on the first of May, um, uh, the day after the um, the day after we we beat beat our friends from from um, North London, our, our, our dear beloved neighbours. Um, so Joss asks, do the panel think we are the real deal at the moment? If not, where would you like us? Where would you like to see us strengthen? And he just adds about Lamella, forgotten, possibly gone to. Two players, perhaps um, Barkley or Zaha for Lamella, perhaps if he if he is gone and he he's going, and um, uh, a, a turd in a bag to replace Sissoko, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it could do a better job. Um, or it, it's go for Sissoko, some yeah. somebody else who can play that little role. But I I I, I think the the bigger issue is um, is keeping the players that we've got and making sure they stay together um, rather than who we can strengthen on. I'd be quite happy to carry all the same players apart from Sissoko into the next season. But yeah, it's, it's keeping those ones together. Yeah, but I, I genuinely can't see that. As long as, as long as Maurizio is still there, as long as we can keep him, I can't see any of those players leaving. Also, I think a fit Lamella would be a good addition to the squad. And yeah. he would would be a, a an able replacement for um for Sissoko. Um, Aaron, what areas should we? I uh, you know I kind of tend to agree. I think we, we uh, focuses on keeping the team together, but I do think that we have a slight, ever so slight, um, lack of backup for Ericsson. Um, I mean, there are players that can sort of fill in, but and I'm, and I don't know how you actually find someone who who can be that um who can play that role in the way that Ericsson plays it but it would be good to have somebody um who can be creative from the midfield Lamella. um yeah Lamella is it tends to be that but it's it's not quite the same right i mean he looks for that pass in the same way that Ericsson does um he certainly puts a foot in in a way that Ericsson doesn't tend to um so yes with Lamella back um, I think we're, we have less of an issue. But when Lamella moves in, 
to cover for Ericsson, for example, if there's a rotation, then you actually have a new problem, which is that the position that Lamella takes, um, that that's always been a problem for us, having backup for a player like Lamella, who's who's got that work rate. With Harry Winks um, injured and with Lamella potentially on the outs, we need, s- I would take one more person in that kind of vector, you know, Edwards. someone who's... Yeah, well, un, uh, sort of untested, right? Mm. Un, un, unknown, but possibly. I'm sure there's. I'm sure that we have people coming through the um, the youth setup that are that are pop, that are capable. Yeah, I think apart from the unknown Edwards, and apart from a fit Lamella, and obviously keeping all of those. I think I, I, there are three areas I'd, I'd I'd like us to bring bring in a centre back because I'm not sure about Vimmer and I'm long term and I'm not sure that he will, he will be at Spurs next season. Um Carter Vickers, although I thought he did okay initially, I wasn't too impressed with him um in the Wickham match. But it's, it's, he's a young man and it's a, it's early days, but um I think we could do with another centre back. Um uh, I know that people will say, well but how's he gonna get in the team and who's he gonna who who are we gonna drop? We're gonna drop Yan are we gonna drop but you need that strength and depth. You need. Um, it might be a young centre back. It might be somebody like the the lad at Burnley, um, Keane. Um, so I'd like that. I'd agree with you both. I'd like a sort of Ericsson replacement um, or competition, whatever you want to call it. And, and I like another striker. And even if Janssen does the business next season for us, and I know that you've got Son who can play in that role, I would like a another striker. Maybe a young striker. Maybe somebody. Um, Greg was going on about this last last season. Somebody like a Batshui, um, we're not going to get him now. Um, I don't want him. He's, he's damaged good, as far as I'm concerned. Or somebody like the lad um, who's at Celtic now, but was was at Fulham last year. The other Moussa Dembele. Yeah. Um, I think so- something like that. I don't. I don't think we need a marquee signing. Um, I think we've got marquee signings in the team. We've got Delhi. We've got Kane. We've got Toby. We've got Jan. We've got Larice. We've got these great players. Um, we don't need to bring in somebody necessary from outside. Um, so the, there are the, the, those are the three areas I'd, I'd like us to, to strengthen in. Um, a gentleman called John Steggles asks, what can, <laughs> take, what can take us to the next level? So uh, just just what, what, what do we need to do to lift us to the, the, the higher echelons? I mean, you know, people at the moment... Is it that we've got to win something to be seen and be taken serious or, or to lift us? Is it something in our mentality? I think the penny dropped um, for the West Brom game when we won 4-0. We've been utterly relentless since then. In the past, there will always be that old game where we go missing and we'd lose something and we wouldn't turn up and we'd drop points and lose that. And we seem to have shed that, I think, which is, is nice. Is it experience that we need in the side? Someone who knows what it takes to win and has that desire. Um, I think the team's has developed that desire to win and pushing each other on is it a world-class player that we could buy in a marquee signing like you just mentioned um a game changer come on and, and just you know completely shift something like a Mane or you know it, it, i'm not saying we'll ever want him back but bail somebody like that or is it just to be better in europe we're not getting over the line for any quality you know quarterfinals or semis recently um, so, you know, what is it, uh, you know, we're, I think we're a young side and growing as players, growing as a team and Poch is still growing as a manager. Um, and I don't think we've reached the top of our curve by any stretch of the, uh, imagination, but you know, w- what do you think guys do we need to do just to, you know, just hit that next peak? Honestly, just, I think, yeah. I think a trophy, I think we get that trophy. I think you hit the nail on the head. We're a young team. We've got a young manager. But we've already you can already see the progress we've made from the first season that Pochettino was in charge and then this season on the back of last season. Um so we we we're progressing in the right direction. I know I know a lot of people say, Oh yeah, but we didn't spend we didn't spend big in the summer, we didn't really strengthen our squad. But we didn't really need to. We actually had Pochettino had faith in the players that that, that, that we had. Yeah, arguably some of the money could have been spent better when you think of Sissoko and, and um Janssen, it's early days. Um, but then you look at some of the some of the teams around us. Look at the, the money that United spent on Pogba and and, and various others. Um, so teams always go in the transfer market and, and will always 
make signings which don't necessarily work out. Um, but I think we, we we just need to continue to develop with time, and we'll we'll do that. We're doing everything right, and I think a trophy will take us over the line. The European question is interesting because if we do if we do win a trophy and that breeds confidence, and we start to boss it domestically, the next step would be Europe. And I don't I think at the moment, I don't know what it is and I don't know what it's going to take, but I think we're just a bit maybe naive at the moment and we're not quite there yet. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head, Jav. I think it's, I think it's time and it's maturity. And I think, as a, you know, I'm actually not sure that our players um, need more time and need more maturity. I think they're kind of playing beyond their years in many respects and there's they're just going to continue to improve just by virtue of having played more and more and more and in better competition better competition i think the 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 thing that will push us over the edge um is potch's maturity in relation to the cups and in relation to europe and i think that will (laughs) He he has to start to approach those competitions from a different point of view, as opposed to sort of well, let's see what happens. Let's see if 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 we kind of sneak through the early rounds, and if we get through the early rounds, then we'll start to pay attention to it. Um, you don't see that kind of attitude in um, the so-called bigger clubs, and I think I think demanding of our squad to be to show up in Europe. To be able to play midweek and the weekend, um, I think that will that will be an enormous sea change in in the way that the, the squad perceives themselves and the way we the level that we next we, we we next take. But in truth, winning a cup is the very definition of of getting to that next level because at this point there's 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 nothing. I mean, second place in April, we're challenging for the league. Uh, there's, you know, there's very little to complain about in terms of our form in the Premier League. So all that's really left for us, and so, and by the way, uh, semi-finals in the FA Cup, right? So all that's left is our attitude towards Europe and attracting some marquee talent to come off the bench. But all of that is, I think, in relationship to Europe, and I think it's relationship to the way we we approach those games, um, and then. You know, the last thing I'll say is I'm, I don't know if there's a fix for this. And I don't know if we need a fix for this, but um, our wage structure being what it is, is going to always limit us. We are in this kind of golden era. If these players do want to go and get and get paid, which eventually they may want to, um, they will look elsewhere to get that big paycheck. And um, and we will have to continue to improve and replace um, from within or continue the the project that Pach has set out with with finding undervalued players. But at a certain point, um, that we'll have to take a look at that as a club and 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 they'll have to sort of reassess our limitations in terms of wage uh, in terms of wage structure. Maybe the new stadium will, will will do that or maybe it won't and maybe we'll just continue the way we've we've continued the past couple of years. Well, I, I think, think the stadium will help in a big way with the wages going forward. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the danger is, is that Man United come in in the summer and off, off a Delhi Alley to, an, you know, 250 grand a week. Um, some, uh, you know, the, the, my heart says, no, he's going to stay with Tottenham. He loves Poch and stuff. But my head says it's 250 grand a fucking week. Right. Why would he turn it down? Right. You know, and that's that. I think that we need to sort those wages out, and we do need to move, and we need, and we do need to take the hit of being in Wembley or wherever potentially for a season. And I think that's that's going to be our stumbling block in a, in a, in our recent future. Is is Wembley? It's the only question mark on the horizon. Again, Arsenal, City, United, Liverpool, they've got rebuilding jobs again to do in the summer because they've got no defenses and they all need players. I I can see it's being us and Chelsea again next season if we if we can deal with being at Wembley. I think that um, we're never going to be able to compete with, well, until we move into that new stadium, and even then it'll probably take a few years, I, I can't see us competing uh, for the foreseeable future in terms of, you know, 250,000, 300,000 wages, ridiculous money that, that United or, or, or Chelsea or City would offer. And it, arguably, even if we've got 
the revenue coming in from the new stadium, I'm not sure that Levy's going to play that stupid amount of money. What I think he will do is a continuation of what we've seen this season, which is, particularly if we're successful, um, you know, I don't know how you measure success, but if we, for example, if we, if we win the FA Cup and finish second, or dare I say it, if we win the league, or dare I say it, if we win, win the double, one of those, any one of those, um, I think the players will, will, will be... Um, rewarded. Toby will, will hopefully be, be offered a, a, um, a new contract. Lamella, if everything's okay with him, hopefully him too. Um, and and all the players that signed new contracts this season, I'm sure we'll see photos of them next season with with new improved deals. Um, it might only be slightly more than they're on. I'm sure it won't be the amount that they're getting paid that that they, that they could get paid at other clubs. But I think. I think Pochettino is a big, big part of that, and I, and I honestly think that if, if as long as Pochettino is there, um, that I can't see us, and I can't see somebody like Delhi's um, head being twisted and, and him leaving for for United because he's he's happy, he's settled, um, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. So um, I can't see that myself. Um, a question for both of you, um, which was I should have asked this earlier. Um, and I'll, and I'll come back to listeners' questions in a minute. Um, if you had a choice of losing, I know it's one of these stupid either or um, scenarios, but if you had a choice of losing on Saturday, facing the disappointment of Saturday, um, losing, but then going on to to win the league, would you take that, or would you take an FA Cup win but finishing second, John? Both. Why can't we have both? It's an, either, it's an either. It's an either. Uh, if it's a hypothetical thing, yeah. I would. I would prefer to have the league over an FA Cup final. Um, so, yeah, I'd take the league over the FA Cup. Um, but why not both? We're thirty to one. I've just checked the odds. We're thirty to one to do the double. Let's do both. To dare is to do is the motto. Go for it. Uh, I'll, I'll come to why I, I thought that for, for a minute. Uh, let me just come to Aaron and say the same question. If you had a choice of playing Chelsea this Saturday, losing the game, being really downbeat, but then going on and winning the league, would you take that or would you win the FA, rather win the FA Cup knowing it's probably realistically more viable and finish second? League or Cup? And it's an either-all scenario. Uh, yeah, I mean... The thing with winning the cup is that you can pin it all on a single event, right? You know, the joy of that single game and the celebration in that single moment. Um, we, If you have to choose, well, oh, fuck it. No, if we have to choose, we have to win the, the league. Of course, of yeah. course, the league. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, no question. I don't know. <laughs> it went down a funny path there. But yes, the league. One hundred percent. Yeah. So I, the, the reason I started thinking about this was earlier on, and, and you're right, John. Why does it have to be? Why does it have to be one or the other? It can be both. Um, the reason I, I was thinking about this was I just just for a moment it occurred to me, and I, I'll, I'll be there on Saturday at Wembley, and um, there's nothing worse than going to a match and then coming, but particularly a big occasion like that, and then just coming back disappointed. And I just sort of felt, what if we did lose? Obviously, it'd be really disappointing. But what if we then just went on and put a run together, and Chelsea, um, you know, drop drops a cup, um, drop some points in a couple more matches, and we went on, went on, and, and, and won the league. That would obviously be the harder, maybe, of the two. Um, and I was like, oh, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather that. But of course, I don't want disappointment on on Saturday. So. I think if you ask any manager, fan, or anybody involved in football, what would you rather have, a cup or a league? They will always say they would want the league because it's over 38 games. You're the better side. You've uh, you've won the more games, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, I, I I want both. I'm not satisfied with one or the other. I want both. <laughs> and 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 it's viable. The double is on. It is his on. Um, let, let, let you know. It, let's. I'm. I'm enjoying this season. Really, I, mean, I enjoyed last season, but this season I'm just a bit more relaxed about the whole thing. Let, let's bring it on. Let's let's bring on all those London derbies. What is it? Four, three or four consecutive four consecutive London derbies. Let, let's bring it on. Let's bring on these games. Um, it, it, it's all good. Let's get it back to the question. So, Craig McKissock, um, who who I met at the pub. Um, at the, the number eight last week, and, and he was there yesterday. So he's, he's from Loch Lomond Spurs, and he asks, "Do we have the best f- 
fullback situation of any club in the top flight with Rose, Walker, Trips and Ben. And we have a multitude of options for the envy of the Premier League. I'll go further yes. and say I think we've got the best centre backs as well, best centre back pairing and best full backs in the league. I don't I can't think of another team that can better our back four or five, including five, Norris. Yeah. yeah. At all. Even with the cover trips, I mean there was a commentator yesterday yesterday said that um yeah, Walker had made a run that was trippier like. Mm. <laughs> That's quite uh, it, it, uh, I like, I like Trippi. He's a great cross of the ball. I wish Walker would do more first-time crosses like he can. And Ben Davis, you know, he's taking shots. Yes, they had a good game. Um, I think Walker's the only one out of the back four or five that we could lose. And we've got cover available in Trippier. Um, I, I don't think we would be so well off with Davis full-time. But um, I'm quite happy with them. They're, they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, I'd, I'd say the best... Um terms of options for the best best in the league um for me walker and rose let's start start season that's right early, early on in the season i thought walker, walker and rose are not just the best two full backs in the country i think that they're up there the best in europe certainly rose um and if rose hadn't got injured he was a good, really good shout probably still is um for our, our fans player of the year um trips and walker good combo davis uh, there might be other left backs in the Premier League that are possibly better than Davis but he'd certainly walk into most teams um, and I think the thing you've got to bear in mind with Davis is he's a good backup option to have he, he's, he's, he's fit, him and Tripp seem quite happy to be part of that squad knowing that they're not going to necessarily play every match um, and they've really got with, with a, particularly periods like now April, May and then earlier sort of Christmas sort of December, January when we've got lots of midweek games um the full backs and the rotation of those full full backs we saw it last season and we've seen it this um that they've got a big part to play you know and davis is growing into the position um in a way that i think you know going back a couple of months we were all worried about him and he's showing up on the attack in a different way with a different kind of confidence and he's sort of not just li- limiting himself to trying to play like rose like he's playing like himself in attack and he's showing up in the center of the pitch on occasion and he's 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 um he's he's expressing himself in a way that um has been really nice to watch i think yes he's he's not there are certainly better left backs than him in the league but um there aren't better backup left backs than him in the league okay let's move on next question um Davey McCarthy asks, if Pochettino had been around to spend the bail money, what would he have to do different with it? And would we be champions already? I thought this was a great question. I don't really have a great answer, but it's a great <laughs> question. Um, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting because we, we, we like... I, but across the, would you say that the the the, the magnificent or less than magnificent seven was that an, was that a failure? Would you say? Well, Ericsson's just, Ericsson's still there. Lamella um, and Lamella's still there. So right, and I think also like, the law of averages, you're always going to get some players um, that are signed at any club by any manager in the history of football that all, all that are going to be flops. Yeah. I mean, two, two out of the seven are still there, and the others are, you know, it's not like they, they like, you know, didn't know how to play the game. I mean, they went off and went on to play other <laughs> for other teams. Chadley, uh, Chadley did well for, uh, for, for, for a few years. Yeah. And still Fa- doing well at West Brom. Yeah. And Fazio's doing well as well. And we Italy. finally sold him. Um, I don't think we'll ever know about Poch and Abel money. My concern is is the rumour that he pushed to buy Sissoko when we missed out on Mane and Sissoko cost 30 million quid. So maybe his judgment of players isn't the best. Um, who knows? Let's see who, let's see who we get in this season. If he likes young players and, and, and um, unknown ones, who knows? But if he goes for a marquee signing and he gets another Sissoko, I don't think there'll be um, much or many people showing him any 
leniency on it. Yeah. Okay. Ed Brad asks, has losing Lamella for most of this season benefited the side? Personally, he says, um, he thinks it assisted with the development of our plan B with three at the back. So our four, um, three losses and four draws have all come without him on the side. Um, so I, you could argue that we actually miss him uh, and he's a key player for us. His energy, his pressing when he was on the pitch was excellent. And he, don't forget, he set up a couple of key goals for us. Um, the the Ericsson one at Man City when we beat them springs to mind. Yep. But I'd, I'd say, no, we miss him. I'd say we miss him and need him or need, need somebody like him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, I've always been a big fan of his. Um, I honestly, like, I'm I'm racking my brain. I can barely remember the last time he played. I can't remember the beginning of the season when he was playing. Um, I think Poch has said, though, that, you know, his, his, his orientation for formation is just figuring out how to get all the players that are at the top of their form on the pitch at the same time. And... So I'm not sure. I mean, it, it potentially it helped in the development of our plan B. But if he was still in this rich, if he was still in the team and the rest of the team was still um, playing the way they are right now, I think we would see a plan C even where he'd be figuring out how to get how to shoehorn Lamella onto the side who, he, you know, I don't know what he, maybe he would drop uh, Dyer or something like that, which is hard to believe. But that I think um, I think we miss him. I think we're doing amazing without him. And, um, yeah, I think we've said it. I think we re- really hope that he doesn't go. In the I think he's, he's a, he proved that last season. I mean, the, the, a lot of people this season have been dismissive of him um, and then point to the fact that, you know, he had his first two seasons in England weren't... He was, in, he, was, he, was, he was, sorry, he was fucking injured for most of the first season. So I don't know how anyone can um, uh, make a, an assessment on, on that. The second season was really... I would consider his first season, um, when when po- which was Pochettino's first season in charge, um, and he was betting him in, in, in the side. And there were sh- there were shades towards the end of that season where he was doing well. Last season he was superb. He was a vital cog. Yeah. When we played four, two, three, one, he was a vital cog. If you know, we've got uh, the next question, which is about um, the Dyer and Dembele axis. Um, that four, two, three, one system that we played, he was a vital cog. Now, if, if we play a four, two, three, one. This season, this season, which we have at various times, and we sort of reverted back to that now. A fit Lamella on top of his game would would start, and if he couldn't start, then he'd be on the bench and be a very good um, player to bring off the bench, or he would provide that cover, that strength and depth. Um, the back three thing might have happened anyway. That might have happened anyway, irrespective of whether Lamella was injured or not. Um, and again, if we played with a back three and he was available, I'm sure. Uh, there would have been a place for him in, 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 in the team. It might have been, I suppose, if you could go with the back three and you've got a Wanyama, Dembele, Shield. You've got Kane up top, so there's going to be two sort of in behind. So it would be, earlier in the season, it was Ericsson and, Al- and, and Ali, and, De- and Son was on the bench. It might have been Lamella playing ahead of Ericsson when, when Ericsson's f- form, form dips. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, but I don't, I don't think that... I think we have missed... We, <laughs> We haven't missed him in terms of we've been doing very well, clearly, um, but I think we've missed the option of having him there. And and I, and I think there would have been a place for him in the team, regardless um, of what formation. Um, Mark Stoll says, Wanyama has been great this season, but I still think you can't beat Dyer and Dembele in midfield the past two seasons. What say the panel? I, I think I said it earlier. I love the Dyer-Dembele pairing. They have swagger about them. I think Dyer's fantastic and Dembele's possibly now going to push on and perhaps could be our player of the season. He's one of my favourite midfielders that we've ever had. He's up there with Modric for me now. Um, so I, 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 Banyama's a great option to have. And if we get our noses in front in games and we just want to see it out, stick him on. And he can just sit there and, and like you say, shield with Dyer. Those, it's like having a concrete wall. It's like Trump's <laughs> wall between America and Mexico is impassable. Well, it's rumored to be impassable. Should I say you would know that won't work? But no, those two are brilliant. I think that the the advantage that Dyer brings is that um, he he drops back between the center backs, um, 
even when he's playing in the midfield. So we we do play a back three even when he's when he's playing in the mid. Um, and he that you know, Juan Yama does that as well, but it, it, not not to the same ex- proficiency, let's say. Um, but I, I think at this point it's it's uh, you know horses for courses, right? There's times that we're gonna they're they're gonna all three of them are gonna play because Dyer's gonna be part of the back three. And when it's four two three one, I think we've seen that um, absolutely Dyer and Dembele that access is just just the best that we've got. Um, so yeah, and I think that's by the way going going back to the previous question about the plan B with three at the the back. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago. Potch was talking about how he always played with a back three. It's just on occasion that back three was Dyer pushing forward in, into the midfield when when we were um, out of possession. When we were in possession, he dropped back in so that the fullbacks could could bomb forward, yeah. right? So it's not it's not brand new. Um, it's just it, it's again it's when depending on who's in form, depending on who's the best players available to us he's he's adjusting the the uh formation to get the most of those those players on the pitch at the same time we've got players that that's uh fluid and interchangeable so within the course of a game yeah you can line up 4 3 one and, and as you say die can drop back and suddenly you can have a bat free um and, and we've just shown this season that the thing that's been leveled at, at pochettino in previous seasons is that there is no plan b this season we've seen four two three one there was a period of time where he was playing five across the midfield um earlier in the season as i, as I recall um in fact, i think when, when we played man city um and 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 he's played also with a back three. But you, you take, for example, when when we played with a back three for the first time this season. I know we we did it last season against against Watford. But when we started with a back three against um, Woolwich away, I don't think that. I think it was a decision that was made very late in the day. But it mm-hmm. just seemed those players seemed totally comfortable with it at the moment. They've been playing with a back three for a few weeks. They've gone back to a four two three one. Next week, if they go, if they revert back to a back three. That they just seem perfectly comfortable doing that. We've got the personnel who can do that. Yeah, there might have been times this season when, for example, we played with a back three, and we were asking Danny Rose to not Danny Rose, sorry, Ben Davis to play as a wing back, and that might have been a bit initially a bit difficult for him to do. But he's proved now he can he can do it. He's 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 got used to that. So. We've got strength and depth. Um, last season, I loved the the Dyer Dembele axis, and I thought they really compl- complemented each other well. And this season, obviously, Musa was suspended at the beginning of the season, and then he wasn't fully fit. And I think that th- I really wanted that restored earlier on in the season. But then, when Yama was doing such a good job that you couldn't drop him, and now just through his injury that he had at Burnley a few weeks ago, he's just sort of forced Pochettino's hand. And and yeah, I, I like the combo again. Um, you saw that in the last two games, um, three games even. Um, with Dyer and 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 Musa, um, but for Chelsea personally, I'd like to see Wanyama come in and Dyer to drop in a back three. But I do, we, we yeah we discussed that earlier. Either or is fine. Um, okay, final three three questions. Um, I'll try to get get through these as quickly as possible. Another question from Joss Heddington. With the Universal Stadium celebration of Jack Wilts- Wiltshire's beautifully crafted death on the White Hart <laughs> on the White Hart Lane turf, are we showing signs of actually intimidating players out of games? Aaron, yes, <laughs> yes. I don't know. I mean, I guess yeah. He he twisted his ankle. It, it seemed like he he maybe was injured. I don't know. The the um I watched it the uh, earlier today and the kind of look on his face, the kind of glance towards the bench, the please, please, please get me out of here. The way that that everybody seemed to ignore him, and then he just had to sit down on the pitch just to be taken off. I. Fuck that guy so hard, and I feel like if we if he wasn't injured and he was intimidated off, fantastic. If he was, fantastic. That guy's got to go home and think about where he is and how he'll never, ever, ever play on a team as incredible as this Spurs side. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. I don't think any team in the Premier League will want to play us the way we're playing at the moment, regardless, home or away. Teams come to the lane and know that they're going to, the way we play, 
uh, the way we set up, the way we move the ball, the way we are relentless. Look at Swansea away when it, the the goals in the the in the injury time to win it. Teams won't want to play us. Beginning to remind me of the Man United teams of old, where you know the teams turn up and they're already beaten. They're already not wanting to go out there and they're already playing for a draw. They're already parking the bus and they're already thinking about getting out and getting home. So I, I would agree. We are looking very, very ominous. Yeah, no, agreed. I, I, I think, I think you know, the defeat at Stamford Bridge was a turning point in some ways. I think that was a, that was a, a side saying, fuck you to the rest of the league. And I think the league noticed and 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 you know people talk about that game as this horrible moment, the, the sort of breakdown of all of the discipline and everything like that. But I think that was uh, that was a moment of saying we'll we'll sh- we'll we'll do it with with flair, we'll do it with with tactics, we'll do it with individual ability, but we're, we'll also push you around. And I love that. I love that. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I think we're. I think teams are afraid of us, and I wouldn't be surprised, by the way, if Chelsea didn't show up against United today because they're focused on um, figuring out how to beat us mm. right now. We're a form- formidable force, and you, if you look at our team, if you look at the flair, um, the, 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 the manner in which we play games, the manner in which we 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 attack, we keep the ball, we we control games, and then coupled with that when we need to the physical side of things you know whether that's like at an extreme what we saw at Stamford Bridge at the end of last season but also you know just to a lesser degree if you just look at you know if you look at players like Musa Toby Yan these are big Walker these are big players even someone like De- Deli Ali I know he gets a lot of criticism for sometimes the way he handles himself but you know he's he's a 20 year old guy really he's physically I mean he's quite tall but physically he's not He's not built like an ox, but he's he he he's, he's, he he won't be intimidated by other players. If if anything, he's like right, you know, bring it on. Um, so I I think that, and above all, it's the mental strength that we've got. You know, te- Tottenham teams of the past, we would we wouldn't have we we would be brittle. Um, we would we would be pushovers. We, at the moment, we are, you know, we. We've got that presence about us on on the pitch, and and I think teams are scared. We're a formidable force. Final two questions. Richard Healy um, says he's been playing top Spurs top trumps with his daughter all weekend. What would be the top stat for each of our goal scorers from yesterday's match? Um, if I come to you, John, because I know you you like card games and and, and i like and card games, games. I like board games um and i've got a stat for each of them well one of them's a fact um so son is now 19 goals which is now the record equaling total for a south korean in european football um a previous record was a guy called boom kun cha who also played for Bayer leverkusen there you go that's my son stat my Kane stat, um, this was on Twitter yesterday. So Suarez had 110 games with 107 starts and scored 69 goals. Kane, with 109 starts, 109 games, 95 starts, has also scored 69 goals. Now, uh, Suarez may have assisted a lot more, but he's got that's a hell of a goal-scoring record. And considering how people revere Suarez, I think that's an excellent return. Um, my Dembele stat is... 137 games played, 30 subs. He's only scored seven goals, which isn't such a good goal-scoring return for somebody. He needs to improve his shooting boots, I think. And uh, my Janssen stat, well, it's a fact. His full name is Vincent Petrus Anna Sebastian Janssen. <laughs> there you go. That, that's my top Trump stats for the four goal scorers. I like so that. I... I made up my own categories of stats for this question, kind of trying to figure out what would their top attribute be, because I've actually never played top trumps. But um, so for me, I had Dembele's um, top attribute was um, sensual massage, because I, I just believe that he's <laughs> an attentive lover. Like, I, you know, he's... He's he's worldly and cultured, and I think I think that he just he knows how to just get in there, and he won't he won't by the way he won't just like do it for a moment. He's in it like he's he's not getting off of the ball if if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> is he tantric? Oh Absolute. dear. Is he tantric? Do you have to even ask that question? Uh, him, him, and him and Chadley had a had a, a, a reading group. They they they, they met every Wednesday. Um, <laughs> um, Sun, I think um, his top stat is is obviously memory because he's memorized all of those ridiculous handshakes and um, doesn't seem to have a moment of hesitation. Surely um, that's a dexterity skill then. Sure, for sure, for sure, absolutely. Um, Kane, I'm not sure if this is a stat, but I sort of felt like general Britishness, like he sort of like out Englishes like the, the rest of the team somehow. Just in his, I can just sort of picture him. I, I picture everybody else living in these like fancy houses, and um, I just feel like Kane still lives with his mom. And um, Jansen, um, clearly, he has the the highest lovability out of the entire team, and the only player in the entire European. You know, top Trump's deck that could beat him is is most clearly Soldado, whose lovability may have eclipsed Jansen's. Though at this point, it's 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 sort of maybe like one or two points off. So those are my stats for them. I you think. could go further and say Toby's got one for um, hair hair product knowledge. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm on a better either, either of those. So I shall I shall move on to the final question. Um, Greg Taylor, friend of the show, asks oh, three wo- three uh, three words to describe this Tottenham team. His are camaraderie, ability, and telepathy. Over to you. Right. So I'll 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 get the ball rolling with this one. Um, I would say resilience because I think we're 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 difficult to break down. Um, and I think that's that's the difference between. This Tottenham team, or, or, or well, not just this team, but but last season's Tottenham team, and, and compared to teams of year, years gone by, we've always had over the years. You know, we've played the the game in a particular way. You associate the glory, passion, flair. Um, what we've got now is a team that are resilient, that are really difficult to break down, and and all the best teams that go on and win the league. They are that they've got that that in their DNA, um, and dare I say it, I think we have. Um, so resilience is one. Um, the other one for me is togetherness. Well, camaraderie, I suppose Greg said, but yeah, t- togetherness. I think that, that that's that is there to see um, everybody within the team, everybody plays for each other. Um, you don't get any bad apples. Um, that the the camaraderie in the squad is is really good. So. Um, togetherness, resilience, and 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 spirit. I'd say. So is that the same as togetherness and camaraderie? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, resilience, resilience, togetherness, and spirit. Those are my three. I feel like so, we're all going to have just sort of synonyms of, of the same words. For I have joy, unity, and belief. They they seem to certainly enjoy themselves. The they're completely co- uh, collective. They work together as a team in a way that I don't. I can't remember a team working together in this fashion. And they never seem to um, give up, ever. Joy, unity, belief. I, my three were our best I've seen. Excellent. They are they are the best best side I've ever seen, and and you know yeah. Best, or the other one I came up with is so fucking good. So <laughs> e- either of those two. But if you want three words, uh, magnificent, relentless, and proud. Yeah, are my three. Um, but yeah, yeah, best I've seen, or so fucking good. Either of those two, superb. I have I have one other addendum. White Hart Lane. That place is a fortress, and. I'm going to miss it, and we're going to miss it. Mm. And um, we've, 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 we've talked about it a lot, a lot, a lot of times. However, I'm not making predictions about next season. I'm not making predictions about the new stadium. But that place, the mojo in that place right now is unreplicable. Unreplic- unreplicable? Oh, I don't know what the word is. You can't replicate it. And um, we won't be able to. We'll build a new one. Um, we'll build a new spirit. We'll build a new mojo. But um, that that place has defined this season, and our and our form at at home has defined this team. And uh, I really wish I was going to be there in the next uh, two home games. 
I know you can't wait to move out, Jav, but I have my last, the last home game, the Watford game, I was, um, I had to scoot off early because I was upset uh, and not being able to go back to her and see another game. Um, she's a fine old lady and she's seen some, you know, the, the, the uh, glory, glory nights and some excellent victories. And we're seeing her out in style this season. Yeah, but definitely she she will be missed. She will be missed, um, and I think it'll be. Uh, it might have, well earlier in the season. I think it might have been yourself, John. Possibly, I can't remember. But, um, but one of the previous podcasts, we said, wouldn't it be fitting to the best sort of tribute that that, that 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 could be made to, to, to White Hart Lane would would be to go unbeaten. Um, I think not only still still two matches, so we haven't done that. But I tell you, we could go one step further. Obviously, win the league, yeah, well, that's 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 the obvious, or, or win the double. I know that. But if we we what seven matches we've won in a row, we've got six more games this season. So if we win the next five, um, that would break our consecutive. It's a it's a league record. It's our own record. Nobody's broken it, as far as I know. Nobody's broken it in Europe. Um, which was 11 consecutive wins at the start of the 60-61 season, I believe. I think it was the start, the start of that season. Um, that's still a record, um, not just a club record, but um, a European record. If we were to eclipse that, that would be beautiful, um, as well as going unbeaten and, dare I say it, win the league, win the double. That that would be mag- magnific- mag- magnificent, even. Um, as for White Hart Lane, yeah, it's... I will miss it, but I think we need to look forward and and start to start to fill the new stadium with with memories and 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 uh, yeah. The, the, I think as fans, we, we've got a duty to to, to do that. Um, we've got a duty to, to to do that, particularly for the next generation of, of, of fans that won't know White Hart Lane. They, they it will be alien to them. That they will just know the new stadium and. Um, We've got to we've got to help lift the roof of the new stadium. By the way, yesterday every time I I go there, they, you know they've added a an avatar or something else. And yesterday it just looked just huge. It just looked amazing. It looked beautiful. Right. Um, the next podcast um, we should be recording a week today, day after the semi final against Chelsea. Um, Aaron, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. No problem. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you. And as ever, the future's bright. The future's lily white. Good night. Faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out, and we'll talk out all the.